Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. I want to talk to you today about separating your grounds and your neutrals. Um, it talks about it in the article 250. Um, talks about 250.32 with separate buildings. Um, in 122, uh, through that section of 130, it talks about your grounding equipment conductor for your branch circuits. Um, so this panel right now was the main panel with the 200 amp here. But maybe some of you guys can see what's wrong here is, first of all, they didn't phase this, so I just put some tape for the moment. I'm going to have to move all this. Second, it's number aluminum, THW, if you can scoot over here. Number two, that's only rated for a number, um, a 100 amp, and this is a 200 amp. So basically, that allows more current to flow on a smaller gauge wire, which you're not supposed to do. Uh, this panel was replaced by a homeowner based on what I see. Uh, they didn't they have a bond bushing in here but they didn't bond it and you have to do that when you have a meter out there no disconnect and this is your first point back to back or side by side um, I ended up taking off all of the grounding conductors and putting in and sanding and putting in my own grounding bar and uh, feathering these in and then I also had to extend the ground rod right now further into here now in two weeks I'm going to be changing this and I'll show you why. Well, second of all, let me show you this. This is a 100 amp feeding a number six gauge, which in the code is only good for 50 amps. But that's the sub panel on the stairway, and there's a landing of a stairway where there's a sub panel there that we have to look at and separate grounds and neutrals as well. The reason why I have to separate this is because right here, not only is power coming into this panel, but it's going back out through the same inch and a quarter nipple, somehow they got all that in there, feeding a barn. Let me show you what happened in a storm. This line fell, or this, one of these tree limbs off this big tree they cut down fell and hit this, and it yanked this and busted right here at our hub going into our meter. And so right here, this is gonna have to come off, and um, basically we have to redo this. Come over here, so if you can see right in here, there's, there's leads coming in and leads going out. Now, normally I'm not supposed to cut this, but it's already cut here. <clears throat> I had to pull all this out. There was a nest. I don't know if that was a bird or a mouse or what, but it was packed. But you cannot use a raceway coming in for the utilities and going back out for your own private side. For one reason, they're concerned that you're tapping power and getting it for free. And for two, usually it's just too much fill. So what we're going to end up having to do, of course, this is a great bungee cord. It's been there about three months while she's been dealing with the insurance company and getting bids. So I told her we need to get this done ASAP because if anything shorts out onto this can, um, not only is it shorting the barn and the house, but that transformer up on this pole is so much resistance, it's just going to sit here and melt down and probably cause this wood siding to come on fire. Anyways, what we're going to end up having to do here is we're going to have to do a side-by-side. We're going to have to do an all-in-one with a meter, a disconnect, and four to eight breaker slots. Four to eight breaker slots. On the left side of your all-in-one, the problem I have is that you can't punch out on the left side. So we're going to end up having to most likely scoot over 14 inches inside that panel, that nipple, and drill it out over here, coming through to the right side of the all-in-one. Okay, then from the bottom of the panel. We're probably going to end up doing an LB to an LB coming up into the bottom of this panel. And now I'll have a main 125 amp breaker disconnect over here with the number two odd aluminum. Then I'll feed inside of the house instead of a number two aluminum. I'll finally feed myself with some four hot aluminum with a two inch knockout back to back. So this inch and a quarter will go away. Then at that point from this cabinet, which will be a 1224 slot cabinet, outdoor rated, will come up straight with another mast and go right here and right there you can see these three nails so that's my truss so I'm have to probably be right here or right here now there is a rule on three inch clearance with most utilities but or three foot clearance to the meter but that's usually a privacy rule but this can't apply because it's a garage and number two we've just got to make this fit these shutters will have to come off and then at that point we'll be feeding straight up and going out that way and we have to go through this eave two times so this hole is going to end up being put an insulation in there and just cock the hell out of it with some clay some uh, colored clay caulking 
and make that as smooth as I can and then knock out over here to the right and over here to the left. So now I have a feed in, disconnecting this way out to the barn and another feed going to the house. And I'll probably end up doing a 200 amp main breaker here with a feed through bus bar because you can't get a stab breaker larger than 125 amp with Siemens. So it'll be a feed through lug at the bottom going in straight to there. But now my main disconnects out here, so guess what? Now all my grounding has to come out here. So I put in article 250.93, inter system bonding bridge bar, 250.52 and 53, two ground rods to be driven within no closer than six foot. Um, and then they have to be bonded with a number six bare copper. And they are, it is hidden, but it goes through loops and comes back up. This has to be a bare number or, saw, or stranded or solid number 10 at the minimum, but I just always do my six gauge.